All right, welcome to another installment of the Fragment Silicon Reviews. Four reviews up this week. Um, the first of which is Truxton, um, a.k.a. Tetsujin, depending on your region of choice. Um, right, so where to begin with Truxton here? Um, I think by my reckoning, this is the third Toa Plan schmuck we have had on the program this year. Um, following Tiger Heli and Zero Wing. Um, Truxton... Well, if you know this game, you might... It's kind of the... I'm trying... Like, not so much the lesser viral hit of Toa Plan, because I don't think uh, it got that far. Like... I mean, Zero at the wing. same time, it's become a meme mostly because of Classic Game Room. Yeah, that's where I'm uh, I'm getting at. Like, you know, it's a... You know, it's probably the game um, that people associate with Classic Game Room. If not that, then, say, Cosmic Carnage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that got reviewed early in the uh, HD run, like 2008, I want to say. And you know, something that uh, appealed to Mark, and he kind of ran into the ground, if I'm mm -hmm. being honest. Really, really into the ground. Not just as a running joke, but he seriously did a, like, hour and a half review of Truck Steve. Yeah, and this game is not that deep. No. But it's something that appealed to his... There's only so deep that vertical shooters could get. Right, and... I think the best way to frame uh, Truxton is... It's the favorite. Maybe, uh, like, I'm not sure um, how much of a fan favorite it is. Like, it does seem to be... One of the more popular Toa Plan shooters out there, um, you know, obviously uh, not as popular as say Zero Wing or Tiger Heli or uh, Twin Cobra, even. Um, but you know, probably more notable than say Batsuga. I, I don't know. Like judging the popularity of Toa Plan shooters kind of out of my knowledge range if I'm being honest but what I do know is this is a favorite of the staff um, because the revi uh, you know what is basically Toaplan 2.0 they named Tatsujin which is the Japanese name of this game and they're doing a new uh, Truxton such Tatsujin uh, Truxton Extreme for the Playstation 5 I think that's uh, slated to come out next year. Something like so, that. Yeah. My point is, like, among the people that created these games, this one stuck with them. You know, it stuck with them so much that they named the new company after it. So, no matter how beloved it is by the audience, it's really beloved by... Uh, the you know the minds who made it, mm -hmm. which is really interesting because, um, according to my research and according to the Steam page, they built this game as a no frills schmuck, which is a curious way of selling something, especially in this fucking genre. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. That's not what I think of when it comes to spaceship shooters. Like, kind of the opposite, if I'm being honest. Like, to me, shmups are kind of defined by how extreme they get in various capacities. Like, in the case of Truxton, it definitely does that, but... 
not so much in mechanics. Um, much like uh, Zero Wing that we sized up a bit earlier this year, its mechanics are fairly rote for the genre. Though, thankfully, they flushed all this Xevious out of its system. So its its main disadvantage compared to Zero Wing is lack of an intro, intro scrawl that was translated it badly in memes to hell. Yeah, yeah, like, it doesn't have that, even on the Genesis version. Um, and yeah, this game was converted to the Genesis, which did see a release in uh, North America and Europe for once. And, you know, North America for once. Like, for whatever reason, Toa Plan shmups tended to miss us, but would hit Europe and Japan. Like, that's where, you know, that's where the Zero Wing meme comes from. The English version of the Genesis version of Zero Wing, which was only released in Europe. We never got Zero Wing back in the day. We did get Truxton, which may speak to its quality. Um, not sure. It certainly fits the Genesis aesthetic like a glove, mm -hmm. even in 1989. Because, yeah, like, this looks like a Genesis game. You know, very... How do I put this? Hard-edged, very grungy... You know, specific Genesis color palette. Yeah. And or rather, right, amount of colors per thing. Yeah. Obviously, this is using a higher uh, color amount than what the Genesis could output. That's, like, the big thing they had to readjust in the conversion. Um, because, yeah, the, the Jenny was kind of really limited by how many colors it could display at any given time. Like, um, anyway, putting that aside, it's really the style of Truxton that defines the game, I'd say. You know, it, it's the thing that made classic game room fall in love with this thing. You know, everything from the heavy metal title to the skull logo, you know to, once again, the look of everything. That's what really makes this game stand out. Um, in terms of the sheet, the sea of shmups that was existing at this point in time. For, for reference, at this point in time, shmups were basically like the roguelites of today, or the Metroidvania. There was like one coming out every goddamn week, and I wish I was yeah. exaggerating. Yeah. More precisely, if you were making a game, if you wanted to make a game and didn't know what kind, there's about a 50% chance it was going to be a shmup. Yeah. If not that, the, then it was, it, was, it, it was one of the very strong default kinds of video game. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, especially the vertical scrolling kind. Um, because, you know, this is the one that has the longer history. You know, going all the way back to at least Space Invaders, Galaxian, Xevious, et al. You know, hell, uh, Toa Plan's own Tiger Heli is considered to be a monumental step forward in vertical shmups. That being said, I think Truxton hits the sweet spot in where I like um, my vertical shmups. That is to say, it doesn't feel... I brought this up in the Tiger Heli review. Uh, review. Um, you know, like, as innovative as that game was back in, say, 1984, 1985, it felt really basic. I mean, you know, they, uh, genre, uh, these were genres that were seeing huge strides by the year. If only because, you know, so many people were in this space, innovations were coming fast. Because, you know, 
you know, how are you going to up one the competition? That kind of deal. Unfortunately, um, for very intentional reasons, no one developed the rewind mechanism that Petty is using a lot here until uh, recently. Well, that's not... That's In fairness, thing. on period correct, they could not have the memory to do this. Oh, I know. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm just tried. joking, because even if they wanted to, this is still in the area where... Uh, Bro, the one in your is, corners, you know, ar Arcade legacy where either they want you to uh, put in more coins, or they want you to spend a long time playing it to try to get the highest score. Also, something something rentals. Not at this stage. Oh, not not yet. I'm like rentals. Really, like, okay. First of all, rentals were never a thing in Japan. That's Fair. actually a thing that was made illegal over there. I'm like, but on the other hand, in Japan, you can rent CDs. Well, yeah, th uh, that's a whole thi uh, other thing. You know. Yeah, they, they, they just a couple a couple of important media lawsuits went the different way in Japan than they did in the US. Yeah. I'm like... The real heyday of adjusting difficulty for rentals hits a few... Di like, it hits about the time when the Genesis version of Truxton uh, gets released. Uh, maybe a bit after that. Um, you know, that's when games really start becoming difficult because... Um, publishers and developers don't want you beating this in a rental weekend. Yeah, but in this case, it's really more just designed for arcade, or if it wasn't, yeah. then a thing it's very closely based on was. And yeah. then, for the home release, they, A, literally didn't consider the possibility of changing that. And, right. B, uh, even if they did, they wanted to take a longer time to beat it because purchasing games was expensive. Mm. Yeah. Uh, um, from what I've been able to gather, Truxton did mark the milestone of Toa Plan difficulty. After a certain point, Toa Plan shooters gained a fierce reputation of being difficult even by arcade shmup standards. And, once again, according to Wikipedia, the guiding philosophy <coughs> behind Truxton was memorization. Which, uh, dull. It's an arcade shooter. Like, memorization of patterns and attack waves and all that kind of been embedded in the format since the Golden Age. Mm -hmm. Like, so there are different levels of it. There's like mm -hmm. memorization where you need to know where stuff is to take the best advantage of it in positions. And also, and then there's memorization of if you're not in like the right part of the screen, there's a very high chance that multiple times per stage, a new enemy will scroll off the screen and immediately collide with you and you die. Right. And this is definitely one of those games. Case in point. You know, where... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I hate that. Yeah. But, you know, but as you can see... I remember when I was know, playing... Dar Darius Twin is the only real shooter I grew up with. And I remember as a kid when I finally got good enough to get to level 4 or 5 or so, I considered it immensely unfair that they started spawning enemies behind you because you can't couldn't shoot behind you. Mm -hmm. And previously, sticking to the back of the screen had generally been the safest spot. Yeah. And going back to what I was saying earlier, um, you know, look at the beams here. That's really where this game comes alive with its pomp and circumstance. I mean, yeah, those no are some very those are some very impressive uh, force lightnings. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it, no frills, my ass. Like <laughs> putting something like that in your shmup in 1987, 1988, it, it's going to garner attention. Yeah, and they're homing too, which is really nice because yeah. it lets you focus more on dodging. Except Kinda. when you can't fucking see your bullet through the damn okay. thing. Okay, it lets you focus more on dodging as long as you, as long as the big flashy lightning bolts don't uh, make it too hard to see the incoming bullets. Yeah, I think my biggest criticism of this game is how tanky it is. 
some of the uh, uh -huh. larger opponents are. Like, that's really not good in a shmup, if I'm being honest. Like, I get what they're going for here. It's just, you know... And, okay, some of the bigger enemies, you know, taking some time. And, you know, also there are bosses, which, of course, are supposed to take, you know, some effort. And on that note, this game does a curious thing. There's no in-betweens. Like, this, this is just, like, one continuous play session. Like, once you beat a boss, you're right into the next level. Yeah, there's no, like, time where it's like, hey, your score for level one is such and such. It's just, uh, okay, uh, that yeah. was clearly the level one boss, and we're in level two, I guess, now, but uh, there was no stop in gameplay, really. Yeah. And interestingly enough, this game is also carrying on, uh, was carrying on a bit of the Torch of the Golden Age, because there's no definitive end. Like, when you beat the final boss, uh, uh, stage five, it, re it repeats, it loops again. And we'll keep looping and you get difficult, which, once again... And, and not in the Ghost Goblins way, where it's like, oh, sorry, you didn't have the right sub-weapon because you can't get that on your first playthrough. Just literally, it just starts over. Yeah. It's the, you know, it's the thing that can either, you know, theoretically go on forever or, you know, more realistically until you hit the kill screen because of the programming of the era. Mm hmm You know, point is, like, seeing that kind of design in a late 80s, you know, fairly advanced shmup like this is a bit weird. Because by this point, you know, it's been fairly well established that, you know, these things have endings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, filling the in... the final boss and you go home. Yeah. The and you universe the is safe. You know, ending text crawl or whatever. You know, and this game does have its excuse plot. I could read it, but why bother? Yeah. You know, like, genuine question. Is there anyone here? Is, is there anyone in the universe that really cares about the story of Truxton? There are probably like, some. Yeah, like, probably the people who made it like if that you know maybe those who have actually managed to play Truxton 2 there is a Truxton 2 it's, of course there is um, a Truxton 2 well it's also incredibly rare because it came out at about the time that uh, Toa Plan was uh, self, uh, was imploded Mm. Or maybe a bit before then, but it, it's still nearer to the end. Like, anyway, um, another interesting thing is um, the power of the weaponry that they start you out with. Um, I gotta admit, that was the biggest surprise here, because, you know, your starting weapon is a tri-bullet laser thing. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, like, it's a single shot. Yeah, it's like, you know, I am just... Yeah, scrolling so... shooters love to start you with, with the uh, pea shooter. Yep. I'm like, it's... Off-puttingly generous, if I'm being honest here. Mm-hmm. No. Um, and this is a game that uh, engages in the speed power up game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like many, many, the many. The one where you have to be really careful not to get too many of them. Oh God, uh, yes. It, this one doesn't go that fast, at least. I mean, if you max it out, it can it can be twitchy, mm. fairly twitchy, like you know, not as bad as say a Gradius game, sure, but 
I still caution from picking up uh, speed power-ups willy-nilly. At least, you know, if you are using arcade original hardware or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because for... Yeah. On the flip side of things, I was also surprised at how useless bombs are. Right. I yeah, mean, they're they not, can help. Yeah, they're not totally worthless, but they're not screen clearers. They're AoEs. Which, uh, not the best thing to be using in a shmup. Mm -hmm. They're, they're like, shockingly more useful on the bosses than get out of a um, bind against the mooks like the bomb usually are. Right. So... Yeah, you know, make no mistake. This game is playing against some conventions here, even of the you know of the time. You know, and I will. Still oh, they do shield that... shots at least, so that's cool. And I will contend that while okay, you're not bringing the massive innovations that say R type or Twin B brought to the genre. You know, this game is still. Um, very high octane. You know, very flashy. Even if it tries to sell itself as utilitarian. I just cannot get over that. It's just That's just not a way shmups sell them themselves. It's never been that way. Anyway, um... In regards to the specific version we're showing off here, um, this is another one out of the Toa playing collections that were done for Steam by Bitwave. Um, who also need to get back to me on, on certain platforms about certain things. Mm -hmm. But that's neither here nor there. Um, anyway. Um, so, much like the other games that we have covered and indeed the other releases it's you know it's got the full suite of retro ease functionality that probably piss off purists but you, you know it's not like you have to use the various accoutrements um yeah, it, it, it's got the rewind, it's got fast forward, if you want to make this shit harder. And I'm well, sure there, there are... there is some dead air segments, so it's probably for those. That, that as well. But it's like, that's also something that'll beef up the challenge, should you feel like you need to do that. Like, probably for the bullet hell crowd, because, mm -hmm. you know, th this game isn't, you know, it's tough, but it's not fucking bullet hell. Let's be honest here. Yeah, the, 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 if anything, sometimes it's uh, enemy hell, but the bullets all seem to be generally pretty small and yeah, um, not too dense. Anyway, um, it's got the slow motion. It's got the reset. Um, I'm trying to remember if we mentioned other features in the other ones. I can't, you know. It's like, look, we review a lot of games, so not everything that comes up will be remembered. Um, but if you can go into the options menu... Um, uh, where? Oh, there it is. Like, um, start button. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever they're calling the start button these days. Um, in If you're using a PlayStation 5 controller, you actually touch the touchpad. Um, under the assist... Uh, bits there. It should be. No. Oh, automatically dodge enemy bullets. Mm -hmm. Rewind. Hitbox small. Yeah. It's got additional accessibility functionality. Like, you can mess with the hitbox. You can dodge. Um, yeah. You can turn off the rewind if you want to. Um... You can adjust the auto fire. I'm like, 
like I said, this is probably a. I'm not sure what you call a hardcore shmup fan. Like, I'm, I'm not sure if they have a name, a designation, or whatever. But I'm sure this is the kind of thing that um, terrifies their dreams. Mm -hmm. Oh but no! Here, oh. Here's the thing: you can turn it off. You don't have like, to use it. Yeah. Because you know, difficulty is one of those ever circling arguments uh, in this industry. Um, it, it seems to crop up. Every time, you know, should a Soulsborne have a difficulty le level? Motherfuck, I'd settle for having a real pause button. Mm -hmm. Because I might have shit to do. It's like, I absolutely hate that. And that's going to come up later on tonight. Wink, wink. Like, anyway. My point is, it's got a full suite of accessibility options um if I, like i think, think you can also save wherever you want of course you know that, that is like the most basic of basic yeah. um emulation functions you got in quick save on your function keys mm -hmm. you can force a save you can local record for like um if you're doing like um, task challenges, you can have it record the inputs for, like, a, um, bot to use for, like, authenticating replay footage and stuff like that. Yeah. So, it's pretty high-end in that regard. As far as the actual emulation goes, it seems fine. Um, it's, at like, this I point in time, it's hard to fuck up games from the 80s. It's really hard to fuck it up. Yeah, like that's in the generalities. Usually, yeah. where where things get messed up is in the details, like you know, an audio bug or it doesn't input lags a big one. But yeah, that but more... that's I think that's more we're still getting that in the 3D era. Like games like these, they pretty much it's a solved problem. Well, uh, yeah, it's like you know. As uh, now, as I understand it, the, uh, the Bitwave conversions are inferior to the M2 total plan conversions that were done for the Nintendo Switch. Mm. I can't speak to such things because um, none of us have those. Mm -hmm. Like, plus, here's the thing at time of recording. Um, the Bitwave collections are only on PC. Right. Um, this actually might have to do with, you know, specific rights in regards to publishing. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if M2 has the publishing rights for either the Nintendo Switch or consoles. Uh, you know, and right. Bitwave has the PC publishing rights here. Like... Um, you know, not 100% certain, like, I'm, like, I don't think that came up when, when we interviewed them uh, a few years back. Um, right. once again, if it, if it did, I don't remember, you know, and it's not something I felt the need to really look up, like, um, Anyway, so I think that's that's about what I've got in terms of the overview. Um, as far as to its quality, um, of the Toa Plan shmups we've reviewed this year or so far, it's the best. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I like it more than Tiger Heli, um, and I like it more than Zero Wing. Um, like I think it has more personality than Zero Wing, mm -hmm. and it and it doesn't feel basic ass basic like Tiger Heli does. Um, you know, I don't think it's super special chocolate saucy awesome like get classic game room did. Yeah, not like record an hour review on it type thing. Yeah, 
Like, I mean, honestly, Graham, if it was just you, you, Adam, you probably would have had this ended 15 minutes ago. Probably, but, you know, we are a three-man outfit, and we right. had conversations about these but Yeah, that's the only reason why this has been pushed out to almost half an hour, is because there right. are three of us here. Yeah, yeah. No. Point is, we're not going over every single angstrom of this title. Mm -hmm. It's know. a fine game. Go give it a look. Especially if you're yeah. into old schmucks. Yeah. Um, as far as pricing goes, uh, individually it is seven ninety nine, which is, is the standard pricing of the Toplan shmup games on Steam. Um, and you can pick it up in, well, two levels of bundles now. Um, you've got the Toplan Arcade shoot 'em ups one. Not a surprise because, uh, you know, I'd honestly be more back, shocked if there wasn't a bundle. But, um, well, these things came out in bundles like on release, right? But you know what I um, mean, like, yeah, the, they're kind of implied that you want to play them together if you know you know of them. But I do remember remarking that uh, in the Tiger Heli review that they bundled that with Wave Four. This is another one that came out in wave one. Mm. You know, um, you know, that means the, you know these were the titles that got first priority. You know, it's sharing the same shelf space, if you will, with Zero Wing and a couple of other rather beloved Tolplan shooters, Twin Cobra and Outzone, which we have not covered. Um, you know, point is. That feeds into my theory that this is the favorite of Toa Plan. Or one of the favorites, at least. And of course, um, you can pick it up in the Ultimate Collection as well, which has all, all the Toa Plan shooters that Bitwave released, which is 16 of them now. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, unfortunately, I can't look up the prices because, you know, I own all the games now. Mm hmm and Steam makes that a bit. Yeah. So, I don't know, Galax, if you can look up, up uh, the prices here. Uh, I think I might have a way... Sure, one second. Toa Plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, shoot em ups Ultimate Bundle? Yeah. I need the ultimate uh, the, bu the bundle is currently looks like 20 bucks uh, that's about what I um, that's uh, the Truxton separately is eight bucks yeah yeah oh no the toa plan ultimate the full bundle is 70. oh yeah, yeah. sorry I was looking at the toa plan arcade shoot em ups one yeah, yeah. not well, the shoot em ups ultimate collection which yes is 70 dollars but also is uh everything 60 yeah, it's yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 games, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're getting quite a bit there. Yeah. I know there, there are There are enough people... gems in there, it's probably worth it, especially if you don't want to buy the original carts. I mean, good luck finding the original carts for Truxton. Uh, like, they used to be fairly cheap. But that was back in, back in like 2008. Yeah, a lot of games used to be cheap, and then shit happened. Well, oh, classic game room happened, I'd say. In, in Probably. This case. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it, it's like probably my best recommendation is to pick up the shoot 'em ups one. Um, mm. like that seems to be a good even keel price for four. Uh, for four sh uh, shmups. Yeah. And, y you know, it's not going all in on, on Toa Plan. Um, in case you don't... Yeah, if you don't, don't like, like shoot em ups one, you're probably not going to like the rest of them. And if now, they're you... not all... Now, in fairness, they're not, not all shoot em ups in the spaceship sense. Mm. You know, there are some games in the Commando Ikari Warriors mold as well. Mm. I thought I do, um, Shoot 'em Ups 1 had, like, a mix in there. 
Uh, I think it does. Um, the, the outlier there is Outzo. That, mm. you know, that's the Akari Warriors yeah. alike. Commandos alike. Yeah. It'll, it'll give you a decent enough spread that you're probably able to tell, you know, if yeah. you want the bundle, the full bundle, or whatnot. Like I said, Shoot'em Ups 1 is also the headliners. The most popular outside of yeah. Tiger Kelly, um, because that was supplanted by its sequel, Twin Cobra. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. Which is um, in Shoot'em Ups 1. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I... I'd give this a fair recommendation, especially with all of the accessibility uh, bits bolted on here. Um, so even if you are uh, either terrible or, more to the point, impatient, um, because, you know, the arcade shmups were designed for memorization, but it's like... The people who are willing to do that in this day and age uh, probably already own this. Yeah. They probably own it physically. Which, I mean, yeah. granted, a lot more physical collectors are not wanting to risk their official cartridges. Anyway, um, so I think that'll about do it for Truxton here. Um, be sure to tune in after the break as Petty Fan will be reviewing Sneaky Rat. <laughs> 